once more into the tower, and I certainly made sure that we'd be done with it by the time this clip is done. Again, I'm getting sick of seeing the yellow and white tiles. Of course, I also got tired of seeing the ground and the caves we went through, and we've got two more major cave systems to go through before we're done in this game. <sighs> I certainly hope it's dangerous after this point. If it would be so bad, then you'd think that there'd be more of a response from the police or some other group that wants things to not go to complete hell. But again, that would be asking for too much from rather simplistic writing in this game. Instead, the only person actively doing things seems to be the player character, who is supposed to be a pre-team. Sure, we've seen several Team Rocket operations, but we haven't, uh, really seen them actively moving to get something done as we walk in. We've just shown up in some locations where they were standing around, uh, for one reason or another. I hoped I had figured out how to get to the next major encounter in a few smooth steps. Or that I'd taken the time to check online how to get from point A to point B. Again, my patience when I'm actually playing a game and my patience when I'm working on the commentary are not in sync. Hold on. Going to uh, try to think how I feel Team Rocket could have felt like they had more actual uh, initiative in this freaking game. It's a little hard to think of anything, though, when I also know that uh, the rather limited stuff we got in this game literally filled the game cartridge to capacity. Hell, despite all my bitching, maybe it's true that they had literally no means to give the Pokémon world more depth to it than we actually got for the absolute original generation of Red and Blue, before they at least got to the Game Boy Color stage. Really, just some bits of text to, uh... Make it feel like we got more of motivation to deal with the villains and work our way to the championship would have sufficed for me, though. I know that our player character is supposed to be a blank slate, but we know some things about him, even in this bare-bones game. But, eh, that thought kind of has to be put on hold, because we finally found our way to Gary. he doesn't care, but then I've been complaining that Team Rocket hasn't seemed to be actually doing much while we've been here. They haven't had a single bit of on-screen villainy in the entire game, just some things they did before the player was around that happen to get mentioned, and then we find them just standing guard, maybe uh, bragging about whatever evil thing they had done, like killing that Harold. Really wish they were more active, but again, maybe I'm just way too used to outright war games where even the bad guys overall are pretty re reactive. They feel like they're at least trying to do something at a given time. Here, it's literally a case of the bad guys running into place and pretty much going, wait for uh, the kid. Don't even try to look or sound busy when he arrives. We're just here to give him something to fight for the cameras. At the very least, we're certainly seeing that Gary here is a much different beast than the grunts we've been slapping around all over the building and all the trainers we saw on the road. My only issue is his attempt to use Whirlwind on Marbleback. Seriously, there was no point even trying that move. Maybe not the best Pokémon to throw against the egg, but Garm's already too worn down for me to feel comfortable sending him out again against Carrie. Yeah, I don't think Leech Seed does enough to be worth it this far into the game. 
talking a Bori just does way too much damage for that kind of healing to be in any way respectable. Great, I probably should have had someone on the team learn an electric attack. When I made Phyllis our anti-water option, I apparently didn't take into account how a bloody Gyarados would slam into us. Quite the oversight, considering we have one on our team and he's the highest scoring member. Okay, apparently his secondary flying type doesn't make Razor Leaf any more pleasant to deal with. Eh. We're still sweeping him, but at least this victory feels a lot more earned since he actually feels dangerous compared to everyone else we've seen so far in this building. At the very least, we're gonna have to do some healing before we deal with Giovanni himself. Tempting to keep Marble back out there for the Charizard, since Rock Slide would just ruin him. Of course, it's also tempting to send out Kawaku, since he's got some moves that would really ruin Charizard's day. I've definitely got a lot more options on how to deal with a Fire-type than I do how to deal with a Psychic, at any rate. You count from a critical, then rest in peace. Thanks for the wake up call there, Gary. It's nice to know we aren't actually over leveled for this stage of the game. Kind of wish I could find it in me to ask why you don't handle the boss rocket yourself since you're so damn close to him. But it's not like the rocket seems to be doing anything at this point other than just providing experience points for us as we keep moving forward. Wait. Wait, you're getting information about what's strong and what works on your Pokedex? Does Gary have a different model of Pokedex than we do or something? Because I damn well know that the only thing our Pokedex gives us are semi-interesting blurbs. Such a shame that this is when we finally get Lapras. As much as I love those things, we just get them so damn late that by this point I've already got a water type that I'm rather attached to in a given playthrough. As funny as it might be to give that Pokémon a feminine name despite the fact that we might learn in Generation 2 that's a guy, I don't think it matters all that much here. Just like uh, poor Eevee, he's gonna be staying in the box, despite all that potential. I might technically be a good trainer for him if we had any motivation to train up more than the six Pokémon that are currently on our active roster at this point in the game. As is though, I'm just gonna be criminally negligent, and once again wishing there was more than six slots on our team. There are just so many good choices, and only so many spaces, which isn't helped by just how limited the moves are due to TMs in this game. Oh, you'll be seeing us again pretty soon after we solve the major crime problem that's decided to take your city hostage. Though considering the absolute lack of any police presence, even a token effort to try fighting back, this is just... Ugh, I should probably stop complaining about that by this point. And 
we finally made it to the chairman's room. Ah, my mistake. There's one last speed bump between us and the boss. Definitely nowhere near the threat level that Carrie was. It might be a little iffy to go from fighting one guy to a far more threatening one immediately afterwards, but I just can't see how this poor rocket is going to do enough to make fighting Giovanni any more challenging. Really? He could have used Bone Club at any point and chose not to even once. I like how I just decided Marbleback is one of the designated counters to Psychic Pokémon, even though he has no resistance to Psychic Attacks. Seriously, Rock Slide and Earthquake are just very good at ruining a Psychic Stay despite no super effectiveness to them. Well, it's about time we've seen a Marowak on Team Rocket, considering Team Rocket supposedly killed the Mother Marowak and grabbed many of her kids. Not that the poor bastard is going to survive a single hit here. I just wish that Team Rocket had more going for them in this game, other than just pure nostalgia. Oh, quit you crawling! You aren't an obstacle to us anymore, so you're easy to just ignore now. Indeed, and I'm sorry I kept you waiting. And I'm sure the fact that many of his scientists are on your payroll helped your little discussion there, didn't it? By the way, it's a little tough to come across as threatening when you explicitly lost to us earlier. Good to see you're approximately the same level as Gary. That should make this more interesting than all of your goons. Though a high level doesn't make up for wasting a turn with focus energy when we're hitting each other this hard. Okay, so your fight is a lot more effective than ours, but I've got no clue why you use that item when you could have just finished Calm off in another hit or two. Wonder what Giovanni's thinking when he realizes this ten-year-old kid has more of a killer instinct than the mob boss. Definitely a good thing that Gar managed to beat that one, otherwise his score would still be 69. Sure, that would have opened the way for some sex jokes, but I didn't want to have to inflict that on the poor pooch. Yeah, really hard to feel intimidated by the Rock Rhino when you can easily one-shot it. It's not really Giovanni's fault that he's got so much less of a threat level to me than that Gary was just before him. His Pokémon are strong, it's just that his variety isn't as all over the place as Gary's, and he has one less slot on his team. Bullshit! A hit that hard certainly feels effective to me! I 
kind of sad how little damage that Nido Queen did to us despite a three-level advantage. Indeed, and it's not much of a surprise to me. It's not like you did anything that would make things more difficult for us. Come on, you're a frickin' mob boss. Do something truly underhanded to give yourself an advantage. Not just hope that we either can't beat you in a fair fight, or that we're too dumb to go to the Pokemon Center or the damn beds in this same building to heal before facing you. For some reason, I was expecting to see some corporate secrets or something. Not the same options we'd get for opening a PC in a Pokemon Center or our own home. I'm sure you also won't forget just how many of your own guys were willing to work with the rockets, or are absolutely useless the local police were. Ah! The prototype that was the entire reason that Team Rocket came to this building to steal in the first place. Excuse me for just taking this one-of-a-kind item and letting it collect dust. Assuming it's possible for things to collect dust when you store them on your PC. Again, I am not going to try to catch them all. So the four most troublesome Pokemon to catch, the three legendary birds and Mewtwo, aren't going to be even seen in this playthrough unless some trainer in Stadium uses them against us. Eh. Shame, since I like all but Moltres for some reason. Ah, well. Let's just uh, finish this clip off and start chipping away at uh, the two gyms in the town.